Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very eventful day in Bratislava today as we were there. Uh, photo, uh, video footage here that we took ourselves only just meters away of many of the foreign ministers. We probably photographed and filmed more than 20 uh, foreign ministers there, including here uh, Federica Mogherini, who you see coming out now, fixing to get into her car. She is the EU's high rep of foreign affairs. Uh, also, besides her, we got we're able to see many other of the foreign ministers that were coming in and out. Uh, several of them, such as Boris Johnson here, you see a photograph from England, foreign minister there, and uh, and, and many others, uh, Lithuania's foreign minister etc. Just many of these guys were able to capture, but the, 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 the heart of the matter is, is why were they in Bratislava? What was this big issue? What was the secrecy of this meeting that was going on? Now, according to the press release, they were actually um, there for several reasons. Even the Turkish uh, foreign minister was also in attendance there. And the reason was, was one, the relationship for Turkey becoming an EU member. That was kind of like a secondary thing. It happened earlier that morning. This was the lunchtime meeting here. And th the issues that were being discussed were also the Minsk agreements and how to implement them, the threat of war with Russia, in other words, the, the whole volatile situation of Ukraine. And... Uh, and <laughs> That these were these were the issues, and of course, that only led in to the whole thing of the global military that they're wanting to start. They're wanting to get going. Let me take you real quick. My wife, we uh, actually did a, uh, right there on the streets. There spoke about some of the reasons that they were meeting there. Let me take you to that broadcast there live on the streets there of Bratislava with Yana Benu. Hello, you're watching Israeli News Live. T today we are in Bratislava, capital of Slovakia, in front of a Reduca building where the diplomats of 28 countries got together for informal meeting here today to discuss a very important issues of European Union such as refugee crisis, terrorism and some other big issues is a Minsk agreement or implementation of Minsk agreement, the situation with Ukraine and Russia uh, and a fight over there over Crimea. And I, I just want to kind of summarize for you what the Minsk agreement was about. Uh, the first step was to immediately uh, immediate and full bilateral ceasefire, withdrawal of all heavy weapons by both sides effective monitoring and verification regime for the ceasefire and withdrawal of heavy weapons. From day one of the withdrawal, begin a dialogue on the holding of local elections, pardon and amnesty by banning and prosecution of figures involved in Donetsk and Luhansk conflict, an impending delivery of humanitarian aid to the needy, restoration of full social and economic links with affected areas. The full Ukrainian government control will be restored over the state border throughout the conflict zone, withdrawal of all foreign armed groups, weapons and mercenaries from Ukrainian territory. Now, as we know, since the Minsk agreement was um, signed, it was broken many, many times over this past year and this year of 2016, especially the point one and Point 10, withdrawal of foreign armed groups. We know that foreign groups such as NATO groups have been going there to deal with the issue. Today they are also going to be discussing here the situation with uh, Turkey and the relationship between European Union and Turkey and some other major issues uh, such as a formation of a European Union global army and this is what is very concerning because European Union global army and a call for it is really big here in Eastern Europe and Western Europe right now and it is a um, reason for concern because of the implementation of new world order. I am Jana Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live. 
Thank you, Yana, for bringing this information out here and kind of setting the stage of what's going on in this meeting here. I want to focus myself, though, on the global military that the European Union is trying to put together. Let me first state something, though, that a lot of people may not realize, and that is the European Union officials, such as um, Ms. Uh, Mog Mogherini, Fe Fe uh, Federica Mogherini, she is the EU high rep of foreign affairs. Okay, she is the top top dog on the foreign affairs. And we have others. We have a high commissioner. We have uh, like a president of the European Union. But the problem is, guys, none of these people in the European Union that are the heads there, they're not elected officials. Now, they might try to say they are elected officials because maybe they're elected by the state heads, uh, such as the president of uh, of uh, Slovakia or the or the Prime Minister of uh, Czech, Czech, the Czech Republic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact is, they're not elected officials. You know, you might look and say, well, if the European Union had their own army, such as that is the United States, where the United States has a president that is over the entire nation, and yet you have all your governors of your individual states, it would be a good thing. But the problem is, it's just the opposite. We're looking at a totalitarian type of government, a dictatorship, something that was never elected by the people. And there again, why would we even need this military in the first place? If each country has their own military, why do we need an entire global EU military in the first place? Is it because we want to reestablish the Roman Empire? Or if we bring Turkey into the picture, are we going to reestablish the, uh, the Turkish Empire uh, that, that once existed before? Or are we going to reunite both of them together? Are we going to have uh, the Ottoman Empire and the Roman Empire merge together for dictatorship over its people? If the people of Eastern and Western Europe are not able to vote in the leaders that are the head of the European Union, then friends, it's going to be a totalitarian uh, regime. And the military, in this case here, will not be to fight off the boogeyman that they have created, but instead it's going to be to police the internal affairs of the states that are there by a totalitarian government. And no, unfortunately, the EU members have more authority than the prime ministers of each individual state. That's the way they're setting it up. So it's not a very good thing for the people of the European Union. And maybe the people watching the video from the EU might want to think about this as well. It is a catastrophe. Well, why do we need this to begin with? Because one, we have NATO. This is what the whole NATO alliance was set up for to begin with, was to protect all of its members from any other nation that might come upon it in an advance. But the problem is, is NATO is not allowed to deal with the internal affairs within each nation here in the European Union. They have no jurisdiction over the state. So what they decided to do in the EU is to create a military, or at least they're wanting to create a military, that is just one global military for the EU. In other words, every state that would be involved, and the Czech Republic included, who is actually stated on CT24 News, this was the whole issue about prepare for the worst case scenario. All right. The worst thing that could possibly happen. This is what we were reporting after Germany announces, get a stockpile your food for 10 days of drinking water and food because we don't ever know when a, when a catastrophe could happen. Well, look, just kind of like in the United States, the governments here, the leaders have been creating the entire problems in order to make the people fearful and think they need this. But that's not the case. If Angela Merkel had not done the open door policy in Germany and just allowed all the refugees to flood in, but of course, let's rewind a little bit. We do have to rewind, okay? Let's rewind real quick and take a look at this. John Kerry in 2011, what does he do? He's there with Bashar al-Assad, like a great big buddy and friend, trying to make a peace agreement with Israel. All right, that's in 2011. Remember that. Keep the date in mind. Now, according to Barack, who was the defense minister at that time, he says to John Kerry, Israel, I have an open hand if Bashar al-Assad wants to make a peace agreement with Israel. Bashar al-Assad was all ready to do it. But Prime Minister Netanyahu, for some reason, says he doesn't trust Bashar al-Assad, and the deal falls through. All of a sudden, the next thing you know, we see a civil war start up in Syria. 
Of course, we find out that the Barack Obama administration has been training over in the country of Jordan, the ISIS forces, they've been training the, the moderate, so-called later to become moderate rebels, to overthrow Bashar al-Assad, whom John Kerry was just friends with only weeks before. That's a kind of an odd thing, don't you think? Destabilize the nation now because they don't make peace with Israel? Did Netanyahu really throw the towel in intentionally? I don't really know. I mean, I love Israel. That's my people. I am a Jew by birth, so it's my people and I love them. All right, I am an American by birth, so therefore I do love America far better than any other country on the earth because that's where I'm born from. All right, but let's take a look at the next problem that we ended up having. Well, Yanukovych, who's the president of Ukraine, elected by the people. Now, some people might say, well, you know, the elections were rigged. I don't know. Don't care. Not into that part of it there. But for some reason, as Yanukovych kind of was wanting to play both sides of the economic aisle, he wanted to be an economic partner with Russia as well as an economic partner with the European Union and wanted to get EU status. He wanted to become an EU state. But for some reason, the Obama administration and, of course, the foreign minister, John Kerry, didn't like that idea either. They didn't want him to have both sides. They didn't like the fact that he was flip-flopping. So, well, the best thing to do is to create a diversion. Let's make a proxy war here. Let's make a proxy coup. We will fund this operation, the CIA, according to Russia in their documentary, Crimea, The Way Home, they stayed in there releasing footage, actual audio footage of the telephone conversations that according to Russia, purported, reported by Russian in the documentary, Crimea the Way Home, that it was the CIA and people from the United States uh, Embassy in Ukraine that were working with military operatives that were part of the coup. Now that's the smoking gun that Russia has. Now they have one, Ukraine says, that Russia was involved in the coup. But clearly, it seems to be that it was the other way around. But the propaganda machine began to start as well. Of course, as this coup goes in and they do topple uh, Yanukovych, what does Yanukovych do? He calls his good friend in Russia, President Putin, and asks for a military rescue. That must be the invasion that America is talking about. Oh, Russia invaded, so we, we, we have to come to uh, Ukraine's aid. Hmm. Well, you know, technically they're not part of uh, the European Union as of yet. They're not part of NATO, so they can't go in and defend them outright. But Ukraine can hire mercenaries, just like they did in Syria. The same thing. Now, it doesn't mean pot can't call kettle black in this case here. Russia says that they never put troops in there, but yet there have been Russian soldiers that have died in eastern Ukraine as they fought against the... Uh, uh, the U.S. installed new government, which Barack Obama, by the way, admitted on television that his, that, the, that his administration helped install the new government for Kiev. So Petro Poshinko then is actually a CIA installed puppet for the European Union and takes his dictates from Washington, no doubt. I guess we could call this an op-ed this evening. At that point, though, what do we have? Now we have that Russia looks like the booger man, and they keep making more and more issues to say that Russia caused the coup in Ukraine, when obviously the fingerprints have CIA all over it. And is it not John Stockwell, of the former director of the CIA, that says that the United States makes it a practice to go in and topple democratically elected governments for whatever purpose that they might do? Maybe this is why Syria became destabilized, the whole plan. Was it really a plan of the Obama administration to create a huge influx of refugees into Europe? Well, according to Milo Zaman, the president of the Czech Republic, who clearly stated it is an organized invasion about the refugee crisis. So I guess the refugee crisis is an organized invasion. And what was it for? To send fear into the people of Western Europe because they got it too good. They do have good militaries. They got strong militaries. But if there's an internal problem within the government, what better thing than to create a global, <clears throat> global army for the European Union? 
to where we use one army and our militaries all combined together. We buy all of our own military stuff because NATO will fight Russia for us, but we're going to fight our own domestic problems here at home using, by the way, don't forget, a government that is a totalitarian government because none of the EU officials are really elected by the people. It's not like the United States, guys. It's not a free democracy. It's not what we're going to have. We might elect our own prime ministers in our own countries in the EU, you, but you're not going to elect the EU totalitarian Roman, oh, by the way, and if Turkey joins, don't forget, Ottoman Empire state. Hmm. I don't think it's really going to be good. Do you? And this is what the foreign ministers were doing in Bratislava today, discussing this glorious military to fight off any threat, the worst case possible scenario, and of course, don't forget they told you to stock up on food. Maybe this is why Jesus does say in the Gospels of Matthew 24, there will be wars and rumors of war, but see you be not troubled. I think he knows that they created all of this mess to begin with. I think even the situation that happened over in Austria with my wife's cousin where the iodine has all gone to the military, maybe that's to send panic in the people to think, oh my gosh, we really do need this. Russia really is the big bad guy. Oh, well, by the way, Russia has actually released their own video footage showing that they have put a whole bunch of military hardware into Crimea because they're getting ready to invade. Well, you know, Russia, Putin said on the, on, the, on the documentary, Crimea the Way Home, he intentionally put his S-300 supersonic missiles out to where NATO satellites could see that he meant business. I think if the man is willing to publicize his own troop movements, he's trying to send a message. I don't want war but I will defend Crimea. So if you try to take it, you will do it with a fight. How much longer, guys? How much longer? I'm an American citizen. I can't vote for you on this issue here. But will the European Union citizens, will you stand up and say no to a global army? Or do you really need, think you need the protection of a government that's not elected by you? What are you going to do then? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.